Today I'm going to be sharing the results of a hydroponic nutrient experiment using some of this Farmer's Pride nutrients on some purple kohlrabi microgreens, so stay tuned for the trial. All right, y'all, so like I stated in the intro, what we're gonna be doing today is going over the results of an experiment that I started actually 11 days ago with some purple kohlrabi microgreens to see how these two nutrients combined into a reservoir would do uh, with growth compared to just using regular filtered tap water. So like I said, we started this experiment 11 days ago, and what we did is each one of these trays had the exact same inputs except for the nutrient. All four of the trays all had six cups of cocoa coir, which is essentially ground up coconut shell that doesn't have a lot of nutrients. It can be a little bit high in potassium, but that's really about it. Um, but all, si all four of the trays had six cups of that coca coir in each one of the trays, and they all received 15 grams of purple kohlrabi microgreens. I think we used Johnny seeds as our seed source for this one, and it was organic seeds. Uh, they all went through the exact same germination process, and they were not receiving nutrients yet at that point. They all received just regular tap water, uh, they went through three days underneath 15 pounds of weight and then an additional two days of blackout after that. And then at that point, we introduced them into the light, which we used uh, this rack over here. We put them underneath three of the Barina T5 20 watt LEDs. Uh, these lights just do a good job and we have a full rack dedicated to them because they're not very expensive at all. They're actually super, super cheap and they just do a great job with growth and they don't draw a lot of power. So that's why we put these under. And as soon as we introduced all of these into the light, that's when we really began playing with the nutrients. So two of these trays, the green trays, received only water, and two of the trays, the purple trays, received uh, the Farmer's Pride nutrient mix. Now you'll notice that these are staggered where it's green, purple, green, purple. So this is water, nutrient, water, nutrient. So the reason that I stagger these on the shelf is that way uh, both trays are not close to a fan and the other two trays aren't so we just kind of help randomize it just a little bit more and try to keep this test as even as possible so as you guys can see there has been a little bit of a difference in the growth and this is generally something that we'll notice by adding any kind of nutrient to microgreens is that you will see a boost in the growth uh, most of the time now there are quite a few nutrients out there that we've tested that have given us no results and in fact they've actually provided negative results now just because we're seeing a boost in the what appears to be the growth that doesn't mean that the product is essentially better. Sometimes we found, uh, as we found for a previous test, that uh, even though we get this boost of growth, sometimes it actually affects the flavor negatively and it's something that we don't really prefer. So that's why we always experiment with nutrients and share what we find with you guys. That way you all can find out what works best for you and you can have uh, better informed decisions before you go out and spend all the money on these nutrients. So like I said, let's go ahead and take a look at this and talk about the growth here. So again, the green tray, this is water only. So this received only filtered water that was pH balanced to the 6.0 range. That way we kept, kept it even with the nutrient uh, water pH, which was again around the 6.0 range. Today, I wanna to quickly talk about one of the biggest pain points of growing microgreens that we have noticed in the past two and a half years of growing them. And that is specifically separating trays during the bottom watering process. As you'll notice, it sometimes takes two hands or you even have to use like a fingernail to wedge in there to separate these trays so that you can get your hose or a little scooper into there to bottom water. So I wanted to create a solution to this and that is why I would like to introduce to you guys the tray clip. Now, this is something that we manufacture in-house and design in-house and everything. And all it does is it clips easily onto the side of your trays so that you can easily use one hand and it frees up your other hand to allow for faster and easier bottom watering into your microgreen trays. So be sure to get yours while supplies last at www.onthegrow.net. Now looking at the growth, I'm actually really happy with it. We have some really, really gorgeous stems here, some really deep dark purples that fade up into a nice uh, violet kind of color. The cotyledons look great. I wish they were a little bit more developed, a little bit larger, but overall the coloration on them is really fantastic. We have some really beautiful veining happening in between the cotyledons and some really nice purples going down here. So I'm really happy with that uh, overall. And it does appear that a few of them have this uh, one uh, attribute or characteristic of the purple karabi is this really beautiful kind of purple rim around the cotyledons themselves. And I am seeing that throughout this tray. So everything looks great and on par with what I like on a, a grow. 
Now, if I wasn't doing a side-by-side -side comparison, I would actually continue to grow out these uh, Karabis just for another few days, especially for the water groups, uh, because they are still a little underdeveloped, like I said. Um, they would probably catch up in, I would say, probably about three to four days. So that's just something that I would personally do is I would grow those out just a little bit larger so we get a little bit more cotyledons. We're going to help your harvest weight and they'd be a little bit taller so it'd be easier to harvest. But this is a comparison. I want to show in the amount of time that uh, the nutrients had what results we got with the water. So moving on to the nutrient group. So here I'm seeing a lot of the benefits uh, of nutrients, which is a much taller growth, though I am seeing less purple in the stem. Now this could be uh, because these did grow more vigorously that they're not so uh, stunted and therefore the longer stems have a, they kind of disperse the color that happens within the stem. And also uh, only receiving water sometimes does stress out the plant. And if you provide certain stresses to the plants, you can get certain benefits like different coloration, different flavors, things like that. Hence like the red stems for sunflowers, you dehydrate sunflowers and what you'll get is like a redder stem and generally a nuttier, more um, improved flavor is what we've noticed. So anyways, back to this. As for the cotyledon development, uh, I really like the sizes on this. This is what I would prefer to see over here in this group, how these are so small. I really prefer these much larger, uh, especially, I mean, here's kind of the ideal one. Let me go ahead and pluck it out right here. You have a really nice looking cotyledon development, really large and substantial. I'm not seeing any true leaf really, uh, but regardless, I'm happy with the height on this tray and this is the time to be uh, harvesting it around. Nutrient group so far looking really awesome. Second water group is very comparable to the first one and I will say that, let me turn off this purple light so we're not getting crazy coloration. Uh, the second nutrient group looks very comparable to the first nutrient group that I had. I'm really happy with the greens across all of them. I feel like the green on the cotyledons for the water groups are just a little bit darker uh, than the uh, nutrient groups and again that could be because these are uh, more condensed, it's more concentrated in that chlorophyll versus the larger uh, cotyledons that has a bit more, it's like taking something and stretching it out, it kind of disperses the color just a little bit. So that could be the effect that we're seeing here on the uh, two nutrient groups. So one thing I wanted to add in before I start harvesting is I actually forgot to do this on the last test because it was pretty substantial I noticed after I finished the video is the difference in the root structure. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm gonna use my little tray clip that we got patented there y'all. All right, so looking at this first uh, water group, I think that that is a really healthy root structure. I mean, it looks very developed. A lot of it's really white. It's nice and fuzzy. Overall, I'm really happy with that root structure. Now, what we noticed last time in a previous test is that the root structure on the nutrient groups were really bad. So let's see how this one turned out for the Fox Farms. And I think this is actually really quite healthy looking. This is very comparable to the uh, water group there. I'm not seeing anything concerning it honestly looks very uh, similar to the water group. So this is a really, really nice looking one right here. See how happy all these roots are. Really nice white to them as well. And then the last nutrient group. So this one's a little underdeveloped. I would have loved to see more roots like I did on that second water tray. But overall, again, I mean, it is a really healthy looking root structure. It's very white and crisp. crisp. And there are a, uh, a lot of nice fuzzies on it. So. Uh, first glance at all the roots, I think it looks really awesome across the board. I did notice this second nutrient group over here did lack a little bit of a root structure compared to the second water group, but overall they all look really healthy, especially compared to the last test, which it was really bad. So that's it for first glance. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and harvest all four of these trays. I'll talk to you guys afterwards. We'll compare the harvest weights. Uh, we'll do some blind taste testing, see how that goes. And uh, then I'll talk about the cost to add the nutrients. And then overall, I'll just kind of give my opinion on whether or not I think it's worth adding this nutrient and going through this whole process of adding the nutrients to this microgreen for the benefit. So I'll see you guys in just a second once I've harvested all four of the trays. Just a second. All right, y'all. So I've finished harvesting all four of the trays and let's go ahead and discuss the harvest weights. Over here, I got my water groups. Over here, I got my farmer's pride groups. So as for the water groups, one tray had a harvest weight of 156 grams and the other tray had a harvest weight of 164 grams, making the average for the two groups 160 grams. As for the farmer's pride groups, one tray had a harvest weight of 202 grams and the other tray had a harvest weight of 205 grams, which made the average for the two farmer's pride groups 203.5 grams. Now that makes our difference 43.5 grams in favor of the farmer's pride. So we did see a beneficial effect, if you would, from adding the nutrients 
to the Farmer's Pride side, we did see that 43 gram higher on average harvest weight out of those two trays. So the winner in overall harvest weight is gonna be the Farmer's Pride groups. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the appearance before we jump into the taste test. So again, this is our water side over here and this is our Farmer's Pride. Let me go ahead and turn off this purple light so we're not casting those crazy colors. Okay, so looking at the appearance on the two water groups, again, this is something that I'm noticing that I kind of discussed in the beginning is that the cotyledon sizes are pretty small compared to uh, the Farmer's Pride side. They're a little bit underdeveloped and I'd love to see those quite a bit bigger, um, especially for presentation as product. You really want those big fluffy looking cotyledons. I feel that it adds a lot of value in the appearance. As for the second little uh, water tray over here, again, I feel like the cotyledons are a little small, but overall I do love that deep, deep purple uh, that we're seeing in both of the stems that turns into like, like nice pink ivory uh, coloration up towards the top. Underneath the cotyledons, I'm not really seeing any crazy purples that you can get out of uh, purple kohlrabi. I mean, some of them are a little tinted with some purple, but overall I'm not really seeing that beautiful, beautiful um, coloration that can happen with certain nutrients on the underside of the cotyledons. As for the farmer's bright side, I am really happy with the appearance overall. I think that we have some really nicely developed cotyledons. I think that the stems have a really nice, beautiful purple in them, though I don't think they are nearly as dark as the, no. So over here, the purple is definitely darker on the water side compared to uh, the Farmer's Pride, but nonetheless, I think that that is a gorgeous kind of violet purple color that goes up again into a really beautiful pink ivory uh, stem. And overall, I mean, I'm really happy with the appearance. If I was gonna choose an appearance winner for this trial, I would have to choose the Farmer's Pride because I think that the cotyledons are a little bit more developed. I like the size of them and the stem height for me is right. This first water tray is a little bit short. I don't, I mean, this doesn't look like super healthy, happy product. This isn't something that uh, uh, kind of screams abundance as much as this does to me. So I would definitely be uh, leveraging towards the Farmer's Pride groups as the winner for the appearance on this. So, so far the Farmer's Pride is the winner of appearance and the winner of harvest weight. Let's go ahead and do a blind taste test. And I need to figure out how to do that because I didn't bring anything with me. So one second. One second. So I don't have any like bandanas or anything. So I'm gonna take a towel and I'm just gonna put it into my hat and try to pinch it onto my head. All right, perfect. All right, Mandy, I am ready for the blind taste test. All righty. The flavor was there. It was uh, a bit more subtle, so it kind of came on. It wasn't like what you notice with some brassicas where it's like, boom, here's all your flavor. It was kind of like, and here's your flavor. And here's your flavor. So overall, I think it was good. It just took a, a little bit it was a little bit squishier than I would have liked. All right, taste test number two. So taste test number two, it was a bit crunchier. The brassica flavor came on a little bit faster. That uh, kind of eggy flavor came on a little bit quicker. The product felt um, small though. I would guess that that was a water group. There's a flavor in there I'm not really loving. But it was definitely a little bit crunchier. Um, I don't know what that was. I didn't really love, love the flavor of group number three, but it did have flavor. Wow, it's got a really potent after flavor, group number three. Definitely crunchier. Interesting, almost like a hint of a uh, spice to it, like a, ta um, not tangy. Kind of like almost mustardy. Very mild though. Uh, good flavor, a lot crunchier. I think that one was my favorite group number four. So that is it. So, oh, wow. Mandy, if you would, please point out the order. One, one okay. Two, three, one. That's literally what I thought. Okay, so um, taste test number one, I liked it. It felt a little weak. It felt a little uh, softer than I would have liked. I would have liked it to have been a little bit woodier, but the flavor was there. It kind of came on after a, few, a little bit. Group number two, I thought the product felt small, which made sense. I guess that that was the water group because it felt so um, insubstantial compared to uh, the first taste test. The third one, I actually really liked the flavor. Um, it was much crunchier. And then the fourth one, I really liked that as well. And it had that mild spice to it. I felt like that was the healthiest tasting product. 
overall winner for this experiment, I'm going to have to go with the Farmer's Pride because I felt that what really deducted points on the water side was that kind of weak, small feeling product and the flavor. It, it did have, I would say, strongish flavor compared to the Farmer's Pride, but it just, that first Farmer's Pride one took just a moment to come on with the flavor. So it had flavor, it just didn't pow like uh, the second water. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with Farmer's Pride for the overall winner of the flavor because both of them did have flavor. The first group just took a little bit longer to come on. Second group, I really enjoyed the flavor. I felt like it was really crunchy. That's exactly what I was looking for in product. Um, and it had that mild uh, kind of mustardiness to it, which was really, uh, to me, just like scream, like, hey, this is some really good tasting product. It was unique, it was fun, it was nice on the palate, and it was enjoyable to munch on. So that's, I'm excited to put that in a salad after we finish doing this video. Okay, so that is it for the quick, quick, quick comparison on all of this. So let's go ahead and recap everything. The winner in overall harvest weight was the Farmer's Pride. The winner in appearance, I chose to be the Farmer's Pride, uh, mainly due to the uh, substantial cotyledon size, the much bigger, more developed stems. Um, overall, I think that the appearance was better on those two groups. And then the winner of flavor, I again chose the Farmer's Pride because that uh, second Farmer's Pride uh, tray really did bring it. Um, the first one kind of had a, a ramp of flavor there. And here's your flavor. But overall, the flavor was uh, definitely there for both of those trays and the product size was much better. It's so quiet when that AC turns off. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and now discuss uh, the cost because that is something that is important. So is it actually worth uh, going through all this effort of uh, mixing up nutrients and all that struggle of pH balancing, which is literally just adding like a few drops of uh, some phosphoric acid or something. So each one of these nutrients basically broke down. We bought a set of three of these, which was a grow, a micro, and then a bloom. Um, and we did not use the bloom in this because we're growing, we're only hitting the initial growth stages. We don't really need bloom. They say you can add it, but you know, I just like to stick to grow if I can, and then micro if I feel like, you know, I just wanna spice it up a little bit. Each one of these bottles breaks down to fifteen sixty-five dollars uh, per bottle, and they're 32 ounce bottles, which means, right? Yes, 32 fluid ounces, which means each ounce is 49 cents. For each one of these, we use 2.5 milliliters per gallon, and we had a three gallon bucket, so we technically used around uh, 7.5, 10 uh, milliliters per each one of these, which is about one third of an ounce, so long math. Basically, it breaks down to 15 cents from each one of these bottles, which is 30 cents total for both of these. And since we watered two trays with it, that means it was only 15 cents per tray to add this nutrient into it. So is it worth it for 15 to 30 cents per tray? I would say yes. I think that we did see a, a definite improvement in the growth. Um, I felt like, number one, we got bigger cotyledons quicker. We had taller stems. We had much healthier, much more abundant looking products. So that's gonna sell a lot quicker. Um, especially considering, you know, how much product we got for such a minimal added cost. I think that really um, shortcuts like that, they're not really shortcuts, but um, if you can add it in for a low cost, why not? Especially if you get what it tastes to be a healthier and more developed product. So I say definitely yes to the value of adding these uh, into it. The upfront cost is, I mean, it's pretty comparable to most nutrients. They're really around 30 to 50 bucks for most anything, and this is gonna last us quite a while. I'll have to play around and add some bloom into a future test to see if that actually adds, because it say it's a three-part um, formula, but I don't like doing three-part formulas. I like to stick to just the grow, again, because I like to be like that. Okay, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments or anything you wanna say, drop it down in that section below and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms, and our website is www.onthegrow.net. And if you guys are curious, we have an ebook now that talks about uh, basically all the experiments. We boil down what we think is the most vital information that we can get to you guys regarding lighting, uh, nutrient additives, uh, and just a whole bunch of tips and tricks as well as some recipes in it. So check that out, it's Becoming a Microgreen Master, which is an ebook and now a physical paperback book, and we have a hard co copy on Amazon as well. So be sure to check that out if you guys are interested in having that. And if you guys are curious too, we also have some new products coming to the website, such as these uh, tray clips here that we have um, patent pending. 
they really assist in the whole, like whenever you're top watering, it really helps instead of trying to get your finger under there. And especially for bottom watering as well, instead of trying to get your finger in between uh, the trays, if you have the old style bootstrap farmer trays, it really makes it really quite easy to just lift up a tray with a single finger. There's no kind of messing around that frees up your other hand to water much easier. So be sure to check that out if you guys are interested as well. Uh, you can again find that on the website, www.onthegrow.net. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day and keep on believing.